June 15, 2008, in the heart of Oklahoma's Tornado Alley, the simple town of Taylor awakens to a seemingly peaceful morning, but to the south, a storm is brewing. It was a perfectly normal day. I thought it was gonna be really boring. The skies were empty. Got up, got dressed, kissed my wife. We went hunting for twisters. It's what we always do, you know? It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Storm chasers Mike Fine and Paul Emmy set out on the road toward the town of Taylor to collect invaluable scientific research on tornadoes. As a team, we've been in everything together. Everything we've been in, we've been in together. We'll often work, so like, he'll take the day shift, I'll take the night shift, I do the things that he can't do as well. We weren't even thinking about what might happen. With their highly specialized research vehicle loaded up with the latest in tornado chasing technology, the team prepares for what could be their last day on Earth. We stopped at the 7-Eleven to get gas, and then we just set off down the road. But then as we're driving, our Geiger counter went off. At first, and I mentioned this to Mike because it was probably nothing, I thought it was just because we were getting close to the open air nuclear waste dump at the south of town. The town of Taylor is home to El Hoyo Nocivo, the largest radioactive waste site in the world. Created in 1974, it is a sea of barrels and safety equipment spanning nearly two miles in length the equivalent of 35 football fields stacked end on end. And I looked to Mike and said, it's just that famous landmark, you know the one. And he slowly turned to me and said, no, that's not possible. We were over five miles away from that. Something had gone horribly wrong. Yeah, the tornado hit the nuclear waste dump. Within seconds, a minor dust devil spinning on the outskirts of Taylor quickly mutates into a lumbering green F5 twister. Before Mike and Paul can react, the clouds begin to glow with nuclear waste. We just kind of glanced at each other, confused. And then we just looked for an off ramp. By that point, I'd had my fill of storm chasing for the day. But the tornado is growing in power, and it begins barreling right towards Mike and Paul. Barreling is a term we storm chasers use for when a tornado starts throwing barrels of toxic waste at you. So I'm trying to drive away from all the flying debris and suddenly, I feel the shocks of the truck shaking and ahead of me, the ground split open. Their vehicles rocked by an earthquake measuring over 9.0 on the Richter scale, the highest ever recorded from a tornado. So now I'm dealing with barrels, debris, earthquake, tornado, and unfortunately, Paul wasn't making it any better. My Slurpee went everywhere. With the tornado catching up rapidly, the two storm chasers raced to the nearby trailer park. But time is growing short. And it was at this point that I realized we weren't gonna make it. I started thinking, this might be it. Your mind starts going through what you did that day, asking yourself if you did something wrong. I thought I'd never see my family again. It's times like that when you realize that life is a fragile thing. And we were encased in this fragile shell of like glass and steel against mother nature, which can pound all of that back to dust in, in an instant. With the wind howling outside their vehicle, Mike and Paul prepare themselves for the end. We hunkered down and started praying silently. Then the tornado sent us tumbling and we were rolling over and over again. It felt like it would never end. But then there was this moment. We were lifted off the ground for what felt like an eternity. And in that moment, I thought, this is over. It, this is all over. But then I opened my eyes and I swear I saw my wife's face. She was smiling at me. And that was the last thing I remembered. It threw us really hard and 
we flip for so long that you lose track of time. But as we rolled over and over again, there was this single moment of, like, clarity that seemed to last forever, weightless. We just hung in the air, and I swear I saw Mike's wife. She was smiling at me. And from there, we landed, found each other, and we made it through it all. We've been in everything together. And now I've been in a tornado together, too. Mike and Paul may have escaped harm, but the landscape around them is utterly devastated. Their truck is completely totaled. But with the tornado crossing state lines, they can breathe a sigh of relief. All in all, the once-in-a-lifetime encounter with the nuclear earthquake tornado cost the town of Taylor $43 billion in damage. The tornado itself only kills five, but the radiation claims the lives of over 15,000 people. That's the equivalent of nine football fields. As for Mike and Paul, they collect on their research vehicle's insurance policy and buy a swimming pool. They can be called the lucky ones, but we call them survivors of a nuclear earthquake tornado. <laughs>